the essence or dna of goa is under serious threat goa's land its heritage and environment which is the lap of civilization is under threat this threat does not necessarily come from outside goa often it is the policy makers that we blame who make the groundwork for this destruction through clever legislation and alliances with certain corporates but is it not the case that some of our very own people participate in this destruction by selling land is there a future for goa its land heritage or should we throw up our hands and leave it to destiny do we need to fight it out in our own neighborhoods in our unique way or does goa require a well thought out concerted and united people's mobilization to stem the rot welcome to guest editor my guest for today is an academician who has stuck his neck out from his cozy world of indoor lectures and occasional outdoor trips to take on the establishment and fight for public causes which many today in goa are agitated about the status of the coconut tree the declaration of some species as women protection of goa's heritage and special status my pleasure to welcome the soft spoken yet combative assistant professor of history at the dempe college president of goa heritage action group he is also the president of goa movement for special status and the goa heritage action group prajal sakar dande prajal welcome to guest editor thank you sir thank you my question to you at the outset is that you have created a lot of hype with regard to hugging of the coconut tree organizing the coconut valentine and there has been apprehension that this is a lot of drama how do you react to this uh, we uh, started the coconut chipko andolan <coughs> on 11 january 2016 yeah when we learned when i say we i mean uh, um, our group history heritage action group goa uh, and uh, goa forgiving of arman gonsalves so arman gonsalves of goa forming has been a great uh, support and he has he's with us so together we started this chipko andolan um, and along with the youth wing of goa's movement for special status uh, on 11 january 2016 on the giri mapsa highway in the morning so there the whole concept was since the government was coming up uh, it was the first day of the assembly session and since the government was coming up with this draconian amendment to the tree preservation act of 1984 uh, and uh, the 2008 amendment uh, which was there uh, which said that uh, coconut tree is a tree uh, and uh, that the forest department permission is required to fell any coconut tree so the go government uh, was supposed to introduce in the assembly um, an amendment which would say that coconut tree is not a tree it is palm and uh, the forest department permission is not required to cut a tree so we were totally alarmed and uh, we said let us do this coconut uh, tree chipko andolan and it was a we got tremendous response and it was a very successful people from all walks of life were there and uh, the message was clearly sent that we do not want the government to uh, pass this amendment uh, which they did on uh, 14th uh, january 2016 and you have also organized this coconut uh, valentine yes 14 february is valentines day so he said this time let's do uh, let's express our love for the coconut tree and i found it is a fantastic idea so we took it from there so we did it in bardes uh, tiswadi now on 14 february we moved to salset so we did it in nuven because nuven there is land filling and there are coconut trees which will be chopped so there we did it and then from uh, salset nuven we went to murgaon taluka that is utorda yeah. and zebops sergio dias uh, organized this party for us and uh, free in fact he gave us everything free because his restaurant is a coconut restaurant where so he has not cut a single coconut tree 
and so the whole idea was like for example on the 14th what we did is harshada kirkar drew this uh, coconut art yeah. you know where the coconut is weeping yeah my brother prasan had given me this huge co um, uh, coconut which he got from karanjal and which yeah. i am using is almost become symbol of the chipko andolan yeah. so we did songs music uh, and um, uh, poetry alexis cartoons and prasad pankar and so many people were there vijaydat lotlikar who was the coconut man limka book he did coconut craft so it was a uh, wonderful so you have received tremendous support and also facebook and twitter all these social media are buzzing with support you know for you and against the decision of the government the position of the agriculture minister and the forest minister is that there are farmers who are facing serious problem with regard to cutting of coconut trees because the position is that the coconut tree was defined as a tree under the forest act and this makes it very difficult to cut the tree when coconut is classified as a tree in this sense so how would you react to this see we are not opposed to uh, cases wherein a coconut tree is being cut which has grown old and which is leaning on somebody's house and posing a threat to the house and the inmates of the house or people in on the road then that tree has to be cut we are not saying that but when you are throwing open that forest department permission is not required at all which means it is full freedom free for all for all the builders to chop the trees and, and this has actually happened because seven trees on the giri mapsa highway have already been cut para the coconut trees have been cut then nuve they are going to cut the coconut trees where we had our chipko so, uh, goa vella with the trees are going to be cut on the road so where are these question of farmers they are not farmers over there they are builders basically this has been done to please the builders so basically the argument is that this should be done on a case by case basis and there is no need to amend the act because right. it opens the flood gates right. for destruction of yeah. the natural heritage of goa which is mm. the coconut tree yeah. you are also in the news for protesting against another amendment which has been brought by the government with regard to declaration of certain animals as vermin included in that is the national bird the peacock the gaur which is the the state animal for goa monkeys but you have to admit also that in the interiors the people face a lot of problem from these type of animals because of destruction of crop uh yes see the peacock is a national bird of uh, india mm, bison that is gaurado is our state animal again i would repeat the same thing that uh, case by case now suppose if one uh, redo is posing a threat there could be now we are in the 21st century there could be various mechanisms the government cannot act so dumb you know that and say that uh, it's a vermin and it should be killed we cannot allow that okay in a civilized society 21st century where we are talking about animal rights uh, we cannot allow the government um, uh, to declare and, and by the way who is the government to declare something as vermin and all this so we need to change our textbooks and all to suit their vocabulary the new vocabulary the bjp vocabulary okay so peacock uh, this again the case by case there are various mechanism to drive away the peacock of so to drive the bison by vermin which means are you going to um, allow the this thing to um, kill them no we cannot allow this now there is also uh, you know uh, news that crz there is a proposal to relax the crz to to allow for cutting of forest because the argument has been made that goa has too much of forest cover uh, and the investment promotion board is one such a mechanism through which these things can be implemented yeah just yesterday i read on the papers that the um, um, environment minister mr alekar has come up with a new proposal i think perhaps to the center i don't know whether they, they are in the process of doing it uh, that crz uh, rules should be relaxed for goa again this is again a violation now crz uh, rules will be relaxed for now wherever they are putting up you know this subaltern people like they are putting up farmer uh, in the case of coconut tree they are saying farmers so this is a justification the, yeah, justification so. here they are saying fishermen you know the camouflage intention is the builders the hoteliers the delhi builders all these people who want to come here and put up five star hotels on the beach and thereby they will privatize the beach so the government is out to destroy the natural heritage of goa how they can uh, ask for relaxation of the crz so so basically if you join the dots you feel that there is a larger picture there is a larger game yes, plan there is a larger picture and not what meets the eye they are trying because of the larger picture of pleasing the builders and leaving goa uh, 
almost selling Goa to the builders from Delhi and other places. They are now that it is uh, shown that it is for uh, farmers. Coconut tree is because of farmers. This uh, CRZ is because of fishermen, but that is not the case. Okay. Now uh, you know when you talk about assault on the land, why is it so critical? Uh, Goa being a small state, uh, you know, does the land signify heritage? Uh, is the land one of the major components of people's culture and heritage and therefore we need to protect this? That is why the question of land is central to the sustaining of Goa as a civilization. Yes. See, Goa is uh, one of the smallest states of India. I think the smallest states yeah. of India. Our carrying capacity is limited. Okay. We cannot throw Goa open to everybody from uh, outside. This, uh, this doesn't mean that we are saying that uh, no Indian should come and settle here. They can come and settle here, but provided they respect the land. See, what happens is everywhere you find the land is being sold. Now, Goans are themselves selling it. That is also a fact. Yeah. But we have to take a stand not to sell our land to people from outside, especially the builders who are, you know, putting up mega projects, the hotels right on the beach. Now, coconut crews are being cut in the name of a beer factory. So everywhere you find that land of Goa is for sale, like Dubai, um, Dubai property fair. Goa related, Delhi property fair, Goa related. So everywhere, Delhi people, Bombay people, they are all looking for buying land in Goa and Goa uh, and the government is facilitator. Government is facilitating this. Instead, instead of guarding the interests of Goa, you think the government is making the laws in such a way that these people have a free entry. Yeah, that is why they are saying, no, for a, why you know, Arle, Mr. Alekar is saying, why we need so much of forest cover? He's saying, CRZ, this should be relaxed. Coconut trees uh, should be, um, uh, forest department permission should not be taken. So we find that the natural heritage of Goa is being destroyed by the present BJP government. So if there are individuals who are coming to buy a plot of land, there is no problem. But Goa should not be available to larger land interests who are grabbing land in the name of projects. That is the position. Yeah. See, we are actually fighting for special status. Mm. Even individually, we need to have a check because we cannot have the teeming millions of Indians and all over the world, including foreigners, to come and settle in Goa because our carrying capacity is very limited. We do not have that many jobs. We do not have that many, um, uh, you know, we, our natural resources are there and they are very fragile. We cannot throw open Goa to the whole world. And that is what is happening. Uh, every person wants to settle in Goa. Every, wants to, every person wants to have a piece of Goa. Somewhere, through special status, in our petition, we are asking there has to be a check. There has to be a check because this is unchecked migration. Look at Goa University. Most of the people from Goa University uh, teachers, they are from outside. You mean to say there are no Goans qualified? There are Goans who are qualified, but uh, unfortunately, they are discriminated. You know, people are calling us names as Susega. Susega means what? Relax, not lazy. So everywhere the land is for sale and we cannot, some check has to be there to protect our land, heritage land and our heritage um, uh, Goa, you know, this state. Okay. At this juncture, let us take a short break. We are with our guest Prajal Sakardande, uh, who has shown his commitment to Goa by initiating certain movements which are to protect the natural heritage and the environment heritage of Goa. We will be back after a short break. Welcome back to Guest Editor. We are with our guest Prajal Sakardande, who is an assistant professor of history at the Dembe College and he is the president for the Goa Movement for Special Status, the Goa Heritage Action Group and also the Goa Heritage Group which has been formed recently. Now when we talk about heritage, you have been one of the soldiers fighting for Goan heritage, especially the built heritage. Now when we talk of heritage, there is a major problem in the construction or the definition of heritage because not many people would like to agree with what you consider as heritage. Freedom fighters, for example, oppose protection of heritage houses or certain heritage. Now, how do we define what is Goan heritage? Heritage is the positive legacy of history. Now, whatever we have inherited from the past, which we would like to preserve, like go and heritage, um, go and heritage houses. Now, people are even the term I'm saying these are Portuguese houses. They are not Portuguese houses. They are Indo-Portuguese houses. They are lived by Goans. 
सो आवर टेम्पल्स आवर फोर्ट्स आवर पैलेसेस आवर हिस्टोरिकल साइट्स आवर आई मीन या फोर्ट्स ऑल दिस इज हिस्टोरिकल हेरिटेज ओके एंड वी हैव नेचुरल हेरिटेज कोकोनट ट्री इज आवर नेचुरल हेरिटेज Our beaches are our natural heritage. Then we have cultural heritage, which defines our Goan identity. Am chhi Kokni, am chhi Kokni ata. Actually, ami Kokni nu lopak zai. Ata am chhi Kokni ji baasa zati. Am chhi heritage. So am chhi Jawan, am chhi Shitkodi. Yes, sogay am chhi heritage. So this is Osharite. Ami heritage mun define karta. Ata the tanga kine dista. Ami Portuguese heritage is protect karta. Tasha na whatever is historical. Now, for example, Pato Bridge. Pato Bridge was given to us by the Portuguese. It was built during the Portuguese time. Right. It is still standing. ओके वेर इज द ब्रिज इज बिल्ड बाय आवर गवर्नमेंट है फॉलन डाउन मेनी टाइम्स सो वी वॉन्ट टू प्रोटेक्ट अवर पार्ट ऑफ ब्रिज सो इ रिस्पेक्ट यू वेदर इट इज प्री पोर्चुगीज ऑफ पोर्चुगीज वी मेक नो डिस्टिंगशन फॉर अस एनी अस्पेक्ट ऑफ हिस्ट्री विच इज पॉजिटिव इज हेरिटेज हम सो पी डब्ल्यू डी मिनिस्टर जो आसा सुदीन दबलेकर तेने संगले आसा इट इज गुड टू वेलकम द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ पोर्चुगल अंतोनियो कॉस्ता ही इज हैविंग गोवन ऑरिजिन but the problem here is that he has to apologize because we cannot forget history we cannot forget that the portuguese have committed atrocities against goans how do you react to this yes the Port portuguese have uh, committed atrocities atrocities on the goans during conversion that inquisition period and all temples have been demolished people have been converted and inquisition has been one of the darkest phases yes but that happened in the 16th and 17th century okay so the mindset of the people at that time was different yeah so we cannot ask the uh this uh, i mean i don't know whether we can ask the present day goan prime minister antonio costa to apologize for uh, things which happened in 16th and 17th century because uh, antonio because, because costa is a goan and because he, the mindset was yeah, different he, the people he, were different this prime minister is not responsible for what happened in 16th and 17th century that is what i am saying no doubt we have to condemn the acts which happened in the 16th and 17th century especially the inquisition and the destruction of temples So you have also been associated as president of the Goa Movement uh, for Special Status, of which Matani Saldan, I think, was the founder, president. Yeah. He was the founder president. Now, how do you look at this? That Matani Saldan joined the Bharatiya Janata Party, and subsequently, uh, the BJP seems to have appropriated the legacy of Matani Saldan, and together with that, the cause of special status has been diluted. Yes. they have appropriated the legacy of mathani saldana in fact i would say they have only appropriated the name mathani saldana legacy they have not if they had so you make a distinction between yes them. if they had they want mathani saldana as a face maybe uh, but if they had appropriated the legacy then they would have themselves fought for special status which they are not doing it is not difficult for uh, mr parrikar to pursue special status issue now that he is the third in position with the home minister and the prime minister he could do it and if he prevails upon the prime minister the pre prime minister will prevail upon a two third majority it can be done and this is the only time we can do it but he doesn't want to do it the bjp has no intention of doing it so they have not uh, in fact they have betrayed mathani saldana i would say now when you talk of alina saldana you know alina saldana was was uh, you know a substitute so to say in the cabinet for matani saldana after his unfortunate death now very often there is there is uh, a perception that alina saldana is unable to function given the rigorous rules within the bjp and today she has been sidelined completely because she has been uh, the, the portfolios of environment have been taken away from her but rather how gracious has made a statement that alina is following the matani saldana legacy because matani went and embraced the bjp and since alina has followed in the footsteps is but natural for her she has to play by the rules of the bjp so has alina sacrificed the the demand for special status mrs alina saldana has definitely not sacrificed the demand for special status in fact she is with us and she is pursuing it wholeheartedly uh, now about legacy of matani saldana uh, yes she um, she got the post after posthumously um, after sir matani saldana's death and first and foremost she her the her portfolio of environment has been taken away from her precisely to please the builders because she was taking a stand on all environmental issues 
and now that uh, portfolio has been taken away now mr alegar has taken away it is free for all the builders and everybody who wants to uh, sell goa and uh, so islands are on sale everything is on sale she was uh, obstacle in that path that is the reason they have removed her no, so no. she has not forgotten the legacy of matani saldana at all she was a very good environment minister now basically when it comes to protecting the heritage somebody protects the heritage they are branded as anti national but when the laws are being relaxed to sell goa i mean <laughs> how would you look at them are they are they not anti national in that sense the fact that any person wants to sell goa to delhiites or anybody is an anti national himself it is uh, now when we are demanding special status they are branding us as anti national we have never said that we want goa as like kashmir or separate from india we are indians and we are proud to be sons and daughters of mother india we have said under article 371 i so that the land of goa is protected so how they can call us anti national it is you know uh, we are anti if we are dubbed as anti national so that they become hero nationalist hero but that is not the case they are selling goa they are anti national but uh, selling the land to indians whether delhiites bombayites or the big uh, capital interests big conglomerates big hotel industry uh, chains is this not joining the national mainstream yeah national yeah goa is part of india and national mainstream i respect that but that does not mean that we sell our goa where we are born to people from delhi and other people who have absolutely no love for goa how many of these builders from delhi and all these places they have love for goa they have no love for goa so if goa is being destroyed there no now this konko island which the people of kankon are fighting that is taken by some group so what love they have they have no love for goa it is we who have love for goa we, we are fighting for our land to preserve our identity and culture which is being diluted uh, so no. we are not against the national mainstream we are against the dilution dilution of goan identity and people from all parts of come of india of, of world come to goa to goa because of the natural heritage natural heritage if we destroy that there yeah. may not be any future in tourism no future in tourism and that is what i think these governments have been doing all these years now you have to be realistic when you are fighting for this movement uh, i mean that movement of special status that you have you have to be realistic there have been occasions when the same government has been in power at the center and the state you had the congress which gave us statehood but did not move to that extent to give special status sonia gandhi is on record for denying that then you have a man called narendra modi who came here on an election campaign and said that if you elect us and we come to power in delhi you will get special status we have the same government at the center and the state in power this is our best chance to get special status the question is if we don't get it now question is when um the bjp government in fact on 15th april 2013 unanimous resolution was passed by the 40 mlas in the assembly that is the time parikar was the chief minister and uh, uh, parsekar was the health uh, health minister that is the time he did not know that it was a mirage so that resolution is a farce or a joke it looks like today so today they are not pursuing it at all in fact he is saying uh, parsekar is on record saying that uh, people are wasting their time and energy fighting for special status but if we do not get special status we will be doomed now what what is the provision under which the question is the need for special status is uh, i mean it's hardly contested especially in goa saying that goa is a small state it has a unique culture it has a heritage uh, you know the goa also has very less resources because of which you know we can can't be bartered uh, you know with corporates or other industries which are coming here the question is under what provision can we seek special status see we have got statehood under article 371 i alphabet i of the indian constitution so what we are seeking is an amendment to the 371 i wherein the special status term can be incorporated uh, which will Uh, say that uh, goa should get special status and the unchecked migration which is taking place in goa somewhere it will be stopped plus jobs for goan qualified goans first okay and lot of other things our identity kokni uh, identity and lot of things now see there are people who say that the state can make laws and uh, protect its land and all that that's not happening yeah that they are not doing it. but even if they do under article 19 any person any indian can settle anywhere any part of the country so 
uh, what will happen is uh, if we do not get 371 alphabet i um, that amendment so a person will say that any person can settle anywhere that is uh, under article 19 people are settling every, anyway so even if you make the state laws the peop the person will go to the supreme court and supreme court um, have to be bound by the constitution because the constitution overrides the supreme court decision also so the constitution supreme court will uphold article 19 which permits him to settle anywhere which means the state uh, laws are null and void they do not have any water as far as article 19 is concerned only when we have an amendment to 371 constitutionally when we have an constitutional guarantee that is when we will be able to check the unchecked migration and uh, all the other um, uh, clauses of our petition to the president of india okay nimne question goyan phodar asa kitak ami ata barik barik gostun jagattat in different places but is there a need to come together ek time on jagadpa is there a need for this there is an imminent need saglyani goyankarani ek platform ar yopak jay ओके जे जीबीए के टाइम गोवा बचा अभियान जेन रिजनल पेन ट्वेंटी इलेवन जो फूल गोय काबार कर नेचुरल हेरिटेज गोई की सगे एनजीओज एवरी बड़ी केम अंडर वन प्लेटफॉर्म इ रिस्पेक्टिव वेदर यू आर मुस्लिम हिंदू क्रिश्चन नथिंग मेथड एवरी बड़ी केम अंडर वन प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ जीबीए सिमिलरली नाउ इज द नीड ऑफ द आवर to have a common platform where everyone will come together and fight for the protection of goa the protection of natural reality which this present government is destroying which the past government congress government finished goa now this bjp government is completely finishing goa so all these parties which are there they are not interested in goa these most of the politicians and ministers i th i think with the exception of a few they are only interested in promoting the self and they are interested in political mayel Uh, getting re-elected over and over again, you find the same faces, and they are not interested in Goa. It is we people of Goa should teach them a lesson in 2017 and see that we elect honest, committed Goan individuals who are committed for uh, towards protecting Goa and not for any party or political interest. We are not interested in these parties. We are not interested in these uh, jaded politicians all these years. Prajal Bab, to go on Deva Bharan Guru Manda, you came on our program and you express your views freely and frankly. Frankly, and we appreciate and thank you for your commitment to Goa. Dear Bharat Guru, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. So that was Prajal Sakar Dande, passionate as ever for Goa. There are a lot of people who are very passionate about Goa, but we live in our small paradises, contented. This was one of the major reasons why Goa apparently never had a king or a common ruler. who protected goa and that is the reason for serious migrations and conquests that we have faced the call is very clear the moment is ripe all of us have to rise and get united in order to protect the land and the heritage of goa we hope that you enjoyed this edition of guest editor keep watching prime tv